Good morning, everyone. It's been a busy morning already. Um, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of the, couple of the announcements. We're starting something new because we need to. So it's called the Back Pew Prayer Circle so that you know where we are. So we're going to try this, give it a good, good yeah, we're going to do this. From 1030 to 1050 every Sunday morning, uh, we'll meet together as a circle in the back to pray for whatever needs to be prayed for. And uh, we'll do different kinds of ways of praying. I have learned a lot from spending some time with the prayer team, and it's time to bring it forward. So um, there's a description of what we'll be doing in the bulletin. Everyone is welcome. Um, if it gets too noisy or we decide maybe the back pew isn't the best place, this is a big place. We'll find some place else. It's like pick a room kind of place. So, but we're going to start there. And we did, we met this morning and it was very nice. It just was very helpful to stop and pray together. Um, so I invite you all. It just means coming a little earlier. That means you may not get all of the CBS Sunday morning news. You may have to leave that. Um, Fred would like to remind you that the uh, parade, the Honor America Day is July 27th, and they're looking for donations for the hot dog stand and bake sale. Um, I, do they sign up somewhere, Fred? What's the, what's the procedure, or is it a just... Is there a place for people to sign up and, and promise I'm going to bring this or that or how do you? Next week. next week. Okay, next week. At the same time, the Pioneer Dinner is two days or three days later on the 30th, and there is a sign-up sheet out in the hallway for your pies, your cakes, your I'm going to help you with this or that, and Chris is in charge of that. So, And um, then Rich over here, with with his new granddaughter um, is organizing a night at the ballpark in Syracuse. Um, it's eighteen dollars a person. Uh, the details are there, but speak to him by the twenty eighth because he's away um, in the month of August. So um, line up your party, figure out how you're going to, or if you're going to go to the ballpark. It is a fun evening. It really is, and you get to stand out on the field and and sing the uh, national anthem, which is a hoot. That's really cool. And lastly, May, we've got a busy month here. Holy man. The middle of August is Vacation Bible School. And so uh, set aside six to eight from August 12th through August 16th. It should be a, it should be a good, everybody has a great time with this. So, um, Make it, put that into your schedule and make sure you're not away camping someplace on that weekend. I've already had to save several people. Nope, can't. Vacation Bible School. Okay. Then we have prayer requests. Kim is asking for prayers for her daughter Marjorie, who will be in the hospital for a couple of days this week for some treatment. Kim is asking for prayers for her family. Denise is asking for prayers for her eyes. It's a little something's not working right, and it's bothering her. Um, I'm requesting prayers for the city of Utica and the Myanmar or the Karen community um, for the events that went on this past week. Um, Kim is asking for prayers for some what may have been some gun violence in the city of Rome. Uh, Mary Ann is going to Aldersgate today for the week, and she's asking for prayers for the camper and that they have a good week. Um, and secondly, she's waiting for the results of a second job interview. So let's pray that 
Sherry and find her next job or her next place. Sean is asking for prayers for Marilyn Bowman, uh, health concerns. Uh, Sherry has a cold, so let's pray for Sherry. I'm asking for prayers for Chet and Barb. They have COVID, and we need them here. So I hope they heal well and can get back here soon. And I think I've covered it. Okay? All right. So let's take a moment and be in a mind of prayer and worship as we listen to our um, prelude. Thank you, Janice. If you are able, please rise for the responsive reading. This comes from Psalms 96, 1 through 4, and verses 8 and 9. Praise for the Lord a new song. Praise to the Lord. Praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Bring an offering and come into God's courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before God all the earth. We're singing together gratitude, which you'll find on the screen.
Would you join me in the unison prayer found in your bulletin? Abundant and gracious God, you are worthy to be praised. We praise you for your unfailing grace. You have blessed us more than we can comprehend. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have given to us. We offer ourselves to you in gratitude. Move us, we pray, to give as we have received, abundantly, generously, and joyfully. God, break through and open doors to new hopes and possibilities for our church and in our own lives. We surrender our lives to you and faithfully follow into the new and unknown future. May your will be done. Amen. It's good to be here with all of you in the house of the Lord. And I'd love to hear from you today. How has God been moving in your life? How have you seen God, experienced God, felt God, been nudged by God, noticed God? And I see John in the back to start us off. Mm-hmm. It's been a big anniversary week. Our son and his spouse celebrated theirs on the 1st. Our daughter and her spouse celebrated hers on the 4th. And Penny and I celebrated our 55th on the 5th. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. God working in relationships. It's so strong. Yes, yeah, Betty. This is our little miracle child here and uh, we're so thankful for god to provide this for our family yeah amen amen anyone else want to share have you experienced god god moved in anyone's life this week i experienced god a lot through people this past week a lot of really good solid people who are just giving and kind and supportive and encouraging and just you know just when things start to get a little shaky, God steps in in all sorts of different ways and many times with people who love on you. So I, I experience God through some wonderful people. Anyone else want to share? Oh, Marianne. I'm just thankful because God always watches out for me in so many ways. Um, yesterday I was pulling out of my driveway and I noticed that there was a bush that had grown into the road that I hadn't um, noticed how badly it was in the road until I was trying to pull out and I really couldn't see. Mm. So I was inching my way out and inching and I thought it was clear. And then as I started to pull out, another car came whooping around the corner and I Goodness. was able to pull back in time. I was very mm-hmm. thankful, a little scared. Mm-hmm. Um, but just um, just last night, you know, after that happened, I talked to a neighbor and he went out, even though it was very hot yesterday, and he helped me to clip back that whole hedge so that I could safely pull out and feel comfortable. Nice. And I'm very thankful for God protecting me and also for good neighbors. For great neighbors. You know, God, again, works through people. God does wonderful things and just steps in and we give loving support for one another. Anyone else want to share? No, Fred. I guess this might have been a nudge, <laughs> but uh, I was camping some weeks ago at Lake Delta, and uh, as I was sitting in my campsite reading my book, I saw uh, a woman approach, walking by actually, and, and she stopped in front of my campsite for a second, and then she came into my campsite and approached me, and she asked me, <laughs> are you camping here all alone? I, I said, yeah. Just me and my dog, and she was kind of, she didn't like the fact that I was camping by myself for some reason. But anyways, um, <laughs> it started raining as we were talking, and I invited her underneath my awning so we could sit in camp chairs and talk. And the, the longer that we talked, the harder it rained, and it went on for quite a while. And it was a really great conversation. And um, so as she told me, she was a Korean lady, and her name was Miok. So we were sitting under the awning out of the rain, and eventually the rain passed, and she went on her way. And yesterday, 
I was talking to a, Korea, a different Korean woman. Also, her name was Miok. And she was expressing to me the blessing of friends being able to share an umbrella during a rain. Yeah. I Amen. think that was, that was a cool nudge. Yeah. Yeah, God spoke to you through that. Amen. Yeah, that's what God calls all of us to do, to be there with the umbrella for one another. Anyone else want to share? Now, how many of us know that we're blessed? How many of us know we're blessed? How many of us know that God is good? Amen. God is so, so good. And so we give back our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. Let us take this time to reflect on God's goodness and say thank you, Lord.
your abundant grace, your many blessings. You have just filled us to overflowing with who you are. And Lord, you've called us all to give in response with our thanksgiving. We pray that you'd receive these gifts that we give in gratitude and that you would multiply them, that more and more people would come to know you and your grace and be filled to overflowing by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And please be seated. Sophia, do you want to come up? You can say no, and that's okay. Oh, okay. I'm just going to I'm just going to stay right here. Your scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Chronicles, which is about smack dab in the middle of the Old Testament, and it talks of David. And this is the very last chapter. It's verses, uh, chapter 29, verses 3 to 18. Thank you, Beth, for running this off. You can't hear me? Oh. That means you didn't hear on that last song. Okay. First Chronicles. Chapter 19, verses 3 to 18. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God, over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold, gold of ulcer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the building for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work that is done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work on the temple of the God, 5,000 talents and 10,000 darknesses of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Anyone who had precious stones gave them to the treasury for the temple of the God in the custom of Jehiel the Gershonite. The people rejoiced of the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, for everlasting to everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours. Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hand are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. So who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen the joy, how willingly your people who are here 
had given to you for the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep your hearts loyal to you. And keep their hearts loyal to you. May God bless for the reading of his most holy word. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Susan. So, throughout the Bible, there are many, many passages about giving to God. Giving and offering was actually the very first form of worship in the Bible with a story of Cain and Abel, the first sons of Adam and Eve. In Genesis 4, it says, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was a farmer and Abel a sheep herder. And at a brief glance at the story, we might think, well, what's up with that? I mean, does God just not like vegetables? I mean, what's, why is going on? Why on earth would, would God not look on Cain's offering with favor? And Cain was angry about it. And God responded saying, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? So there is something about his offering that was not right compared to Abel's offering. And we look closer and it says Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil, whereas Abel brought fat portions, intentionally selecting the costly portions from the firstborn of his flock. Abel chose to give his best, his first, not something left over, a reflection of Abel's heart. And it was the heart behind the offering that mattered to God. From that time on, giving an offering to God was a primary way to worship God, a way to reflect the condition of our hearts. From tithing, which is the giving of 10%, to sacrifices, burnt offerings, grain offerings, fellowship offerings, uh, fellowship, uh, sin offerings, and guilt offerings. And throughout the Old Testament, the offering was an integral part of worship. So we're in a sermon series about worship, about what we do as forms of worship, why we do it, and how it impacts us and the world around us. Because if we are truly worshiping God, then our worship will fill and fuel our lives. And today we're looking at the offertory. And we call it the offertory. I mean, sometimes people misunderstand and mix up the wording calling it a collection, as if its purpose is just a way to collect money to pay the bills, almost like paying dues. I, I've recently actually heard horrible stories of churches that would actually pass the plates several times during a worship service until they got all that they wanted or needed. And Or I, I've also heard that people were like asked to provide their W-2s and then told how much they were required to give. True story. Don't worry, we would not go in there. <laughs> not, not happening, not happening. I mean, the decision of giving is between each believer and God. So it's not a collection. We don't use collection plates or collection box. We use, an, we use offering plates, an offering box. Not a collection, but offering. Words matter. In worship, we have an offering, which is an opportunity for each of us to give to God as an act of worship. And the context of our passage today is before the first temple was built in Jerusalem. And up until this time, the Israelites had been worshiping in a tabernacle, something like a, a special kind of tent. But now there would be a structure built for worship. 
And King David is initiating sacrificial, costly giving, saying, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. And David's generosity flowed from his deep love for God and his willingness to give sacrificially inspired the leaders and the people to also give generously as an act of devotion to God. The leaders and then the people all gave willingly, freely, joyfully, and wholeheartedly to the Lord. And that's the point. Willingly, freely, joyfully, wholeheartedly. An offering that also recognizes the source of all. God Almighty, our creator, sustainer, and redeemer. And look, David praised the Lord with the receiving of the offering, proclaiming that everything, everything in heaven and on earth is God's. That wealth and honor come from God. That in fact, everything, everything comes from God. And that what everyone was giving actually came from God's own hand. Their abundance, all of it belonged to God. And knowing all of this, they gave in response an offering, a portion of what God had already given in gratitude, with thanksgiving for the goodness of God. So then with the coming of Jesus, the sacrificial system was fulfilled as Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice once and for all, for the forgiveness of our sins. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, accepts that gift of grace, will never die but have eternal life. God is so, so good, and we can never outgive God. And Jesus then transformed the way we approach worship and giving. The ritual sacrifices stopped. And although he had words for the Pharisees, many words for the Pharisees, about how they were treating their giving, Jesus did not condemn the giving of a tithe. That 10% still stands. But he taught, though, that our giving and our approach to giving needed to be broadened to faithful living, and that giving needed to be a true expression of the heart, a willing, voluntary act of worship, not done out of obligation or compulsion. And the principles of giving, the heart and the attitude of faith and gratitude and stewardship continued and expanded. Jesus told the rich young ruler to sell everything and give the money to the poor. The early church modeled that with incredibly generous giving and sharing of resources. And that generous giving comes from knowing that every good thing comes from God. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. And then understanding, just like David, that everything we have belongs to God. And we are grateful and want to use God's gifts for God's purposes to honor and glorify God. When we recognize how much we have received from God, our hearts overflow with thanksgiving, with thankfulness and, and gratitude leading us to give back joyfully. As it says in 2 Corinthians 9, God loves a cheerful giver. So I ask again, how many of us here know we are blessed? How many? So let's name some blessings. Shout them out. What? Health? Family? Nature? Friends? What? Clean water. Yes, yes. Shout it out. Come on, keep going. We could, we could go all day if you really can't add it. Come on. This church. 
opportunity to worship, add to that freedom. But me, wow, make my day. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We thankful for one another. Thankful for God. We recognize. I mean, if we really, if we really considered it, really, really considered it, we are just so blessed. Everything comes from God. The air we breathe comes from God. The, the, that we have that we have a place to sleep and a pl- and food in our bellies and we're just able to have community and relationships and just so much everything everything comes from God and so I, I want to challenge all of us actually as we go out from this day to start really paying attention everything you notice is good say thank you God thank you God that's from you God thank you God now in worship I prefer the offertory to be early on in the worship service. I mean, other churches do it later, some even at the very end, and that's fine. But I prefer early, followed by, follow, following a time of praise with the offering as a response to what God has already done in our lives, an acknowledgement that God has already blessed us. It's why it comes after the God moment, celebrating our encounters with God, realizing how much God knows us and God loves us and God is with us. You see, God is not confined to our worship on Sunday mornings, but is an important and intimate reality in our everyday lives. And our worship then becomes a lifestyle as we live into God's goodness. I mean, one of the reasons the church asks everyone to commit to giving, an estimate of giving, is because it's part of discipleship, a part of spiritual formation. I mean, obviously, if circumstances change, the estimate can be adapted, but our giving as an act of worship is something to take seriously. It's something to pray about and consider, to be giving intentionally, just like Abel, just like David. Again, the amount is between each of us and God. But by making an actual commitment, it solidifies it in our hearts and in our minds and helps us to prioritize it. So during the offertory, even if we gave it online, I give online. Every Sunday morning, I get a little thank you for your giving. It has a little email. So I give online. So whether we're giving online or we're giving in person, however we're giving, We know that God is the one we're giving to. That's who the offering is for. It's for God. And God knows our circumstances and God knows our hearts. And worshiping God through the offering leads to faith formation and growth and discipleship as we embrace our call of Christian generosity. And we go from why do I give to how do I give to how much do I give? And we live into that, knowing that God is the source of all. And so we think about it and we say, well, God doesn't actually need our gifts of money. I mean, God is the provider of it all, so God doesn't need our gifts. However, God uses giving as an act of worship for us. Because although God does not need our gifts, we need to give. We need to give to be spiritually healthy. And I honestly, talking about it can feel uncomfortable and awkward and maybe even intrusive. I mean, that's probably why Jesus spoke about money in some form a lot. Some would say more than any other topic. Because money can become for us many unhealthy things. It can be a source of pride, greed, fear, stinginess instead of generosity, scarcity instead of abundance. We can come to trust and rely in our own resources over God, and money can become an idol in our lives. The number one commandment in the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me, but many worship the almighty dollar over almighty God. So disciplined generosity through the offering as worship is God's prescription for overcoming all of that 
God's way of making sure that we are spiritually healthy is to give, to encourage us to be generous with our giving, to take our blessings and become a blessing. So a couple of years ago, I was meeting with some people for our Connect class, the class that people take when they want to join the church. And we were talking through the membership vows of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And I found myself apologizing for talking about giving, saying something like, I know no one really wants to talk about this. but yeah. And this one woman piped up and said, well, why not? It's biblical. It's like, yes, it is. It is biblical. It really is. We have to ask ourselves, why are we uncomfortable with it? Because our, our giving is a meaningful, tangible expression of our devotion to God. The offering as worship gives us a spiritually healthy attitude toward money. We have God as our God. And God, we know, is good. And the offering then goes to support God's mission through the church, the body of Christ. So I was in a meeting with the leadership team about a month or so ago, and we're reading together a book called Generosity, Stewardship, and Abundance. And in it, the author was talking about how our giving is supposed to be sacrificial. And that term took a couple by surprise. It's like, you know, that, that sounds like it's supposed to be painful. But I, I think it's a terminology issue, sacrificial. Not that it's supposed to hurt us, but rather that it's something costly. Because things become important to us when we invest in them. As Jesus said in Matthew 6, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God wants our hearts. I mean, think about the difference it feels between when we re-gift something. Many of us have done that, maybe even most of us. I mean, we need a gift for someone, and maybe there's a stash of stuff that we don't want, and, and we just grab that and say, okay, that'll be the gift. That'll be okay. Versus when we really consider and save up to buy just the right Thing. The experience of giving is different, right? It's different. And God doesn't want our leftovers or to be a secondary thought. God wants us to be thoughtful and to give with love on purpose. So we have an offertory, a time of offering to God every time we worship. Even when we weren't passing the plate, the offering plate, even when people like me give online, we have an offertory, a time of offering to reflect on our gratitude for all of God's blessings, a time to say thank you to our maker and express our love and devotion for our God. So worshiping through the offering, giving as God calls us to give with a thankful and generous heart, our hearts grow closer to God's heart. And our faith grows. We become transformed. And our Christian walk includes being a person of giving and generosity and grace. Imagine the change in the world if believers became known for our giving, generosity, and grace. That would change the world. Giving makes us partners with God's divine purposes and mission. And the gifts received will support the church, the body of Christ, to support the church's ministry and mission. It's why we shared a missional budget this year, to share the stories of hope and transformation, to celebrate how God is touching lives, children, youth, adults, people growing in relationships, reaching and caring for people in need and people coming to know and love 
Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about, amen? I mean, Jesus gave us the great commission that as disciples, we're to go and make disciples. And the mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, one heart at a time, turning toward God's goodness and grace. Hearts that long to give back in return. So there's a little story I read that spoke to this, and it was just a sweet story. I don't know if it's real, but I just wanted to share it. It says that one Sunday in church, a little girl was sitting alone and watched the offering plate being passed around. And the little girl felt compelled. She wanted to give something to God. And she searched inside of her small coin purse and found it empty, except for a few candy wrappers. And she knew she just had to give something. She wanted to give something, but she had nothing. So she rose from her seat and dashed to the back of the church and tugged on the shirt of an usher who was carrying the offering plate. And she said, may I hold the plate? And the usher, watching her with curiosity, allowed her to take the plate. And the little girl placed that plate on the ground and stepped inside and said, Jesus, I don't have anything else to give you, so I give you me. That's ultimately what God wants for us to give ourselves to him and then be transformed by him, transformed by the mercy of Christ, by the care of our Savior, by God leading us, walking beside us, blessing us with his grace. And we give ourselves knowing the goodness of God. Amen? So I'd like to invite you all to stand, if you're able, as we sing together the goodness of God celebrate in the goodness of God as we sing this song together.
Consider the goodness of God, the God Almighty, creator of the universe, longs to be in relationship with us, hears us, responds when we call. Let us pray. Oh, God Almighty, we are just so thankful, so grateful to you. Your grace has just filled us to overflowing. Your abundance, Lord, is hard to even comprehend. We pray that you continue to open our eyes and our hearts to your presence, to recognize your goodness more and more in our lives, to see you moving in our circumstances, and that we would trust you more and more. We pray, Lord, that you'd move within us and our congregation as we continue to seek your discernment and your wisdom, that we would move forward in love for you and for one another. And Lord, we pray for your healing to come in every way for all those things that have been named and unnamed. We especially lift up Marjorie in the hospital, Lord, for your healing to come. Restore her body, Lord, to full health and well-being. We pray for your healing touch to touch Denise's eye, that whatever the issue is, Lord, that you would bring clarity of sight. Take away any of the issues and bring complete recovering in her eyesight, that her eye would be healed. We pray for Marianne and for others to experience opportunities. Opportunities for us all, Lord. Open up the floodgates and show us your way. Give us the strength and the courage to step forward into every opportunity you present. Lord, we pray for Marilyn as, as she continues to struggle in her health. Lord, we pray for you to bring healing in her body from the pain. That you would move throughout her body and give her strength and mobility for movement. We pray for Chet and Barb that you would send quick recovery. Healing, Lord. Healing in our bodies. Healing in our minds. Healing in our hearts. Healing in our relationships. Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha, our God who heals. And we are calling out to you, knowing that you hear us. And that you respond. We're trusting in you, Lord. We lift up to you all of the police. That you would put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. And that the communities would be convicted of the violence and their hearts would change. Protect this community, Lord, and fill people's, people up with your peace. Cast the violence out and help people to see one another with your eyes, to experience one another with your heart, and to love one another as you have loved us. Oh God, we pray for you to move within us so mightily that people would come to know you through us, that you would make us more and more into people who are giving and generous and filled with grace, that we would share that with others and people would come to know you. Lord, we pray for more and more people to be drawn to you by the power of your Holy Spirit, touch hearts and minds and increase their longing to know you. Draw them to your church, Lord, that more people would come to know your saving grace, that we would take part in your mission, that we would be people who would share your love. And Lord, we know we've not always done this. So hear our prayer of confession as the people of God repeat after me. Lord, I have sinned. I've not always followed you. I've not always been loving. Forgive me. Set me on your path. 
lead me in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And this proves God's love for you and for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we have a table of grace. A table that is offered to everyone. God's grace offered to everyone. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity to slavery and sin and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and spirit. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna on the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this often, remembering me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will those who are serving please come forward?
come and receive from the table of grace your great gift. And Beth is in the back of the sanctuary. If you'd like prayer, or I'll be up front for prayer as well. Please stand if you're able. As we sing together, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord.
go knowing, without a doubt, you are blessed. And live into that blessing, to be a blessing in this world, a person of giving and generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.